How do you create an exponential growth or decay function from a table? We're going to answer that question throughout this video. We're going to take a look at some tables and we're going to be able to create a growth or decay function from the tables. Here's a reminder of how your notes should be set up to take notes from this video. There is only one video title. There is no number two or three. Go ahead and cre create your notes. Do not forget your section and title up top. And your summary needs to be three to four sentences in length. Here we have the exponential growth and decay information that we need. Remember that we don't want to write y, we want to write f of x. Go ahead and write everything you see on the screen, including, including the blanks. And then um, pause the video. Try to fill in the blanks using your notes from the previous video. And if you don't have those notes, then you should complete those notes because it's going to help you fill in this information. And then resume when you're ready to follow along with me. Okay, here is the correct answers. So here we have A is the initial value. Remember that. B is the growth or decay factor. That's usually inside parentheses as well. The growth rate is R equals B minus 1. So you take the B and you subtract 1. And then the decay rate, you take 1 and you subtract the decay factor, which is B. Remember, growth is for a value of b that is greater than 1, and decay is for a value for b that is greater than 0 but less than 1, so generally a fraction or decimal. Let's review what we've learned about exponential functions. We learned that if we're given a function, especially when it's in exponential form, and we know it's in exponential form because we have the x as an exponent, we can take certain values for x, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We could plug these numbers in for x and then generate a y value. So I'm going to use my calculator and generate y values, and I did that earlier. So for this one, I got 0.925. For negative 1, I got 1.85. For 0, I get 3.7. Notice that this becomes 0. And to the 0 power is 1, so 1 times 3.7 is 3.7. And then we have 1, 7.4. And then we're going to have, uh, if we plug in 2, you get 14.8. Okay? And you could um, check these ver and verify these values by checking with your calculator. Go ahead and practice now and give the, uh, pause the video. Okay, let's go ahead and answer these three questions. Is this exponential growth or decay? Well, there's two things that we can look at. We can look at the table of values and notice that the y values seem to increase as we plug in the x values. And we can also see that the number here inside of parentheses, this is our uh, this is our growth rate. This is going to be, excuse me, this is the growth factor. The factor is greater than 1, and that means that we have growth. So this is exponential growth. And the factor is B, what's inside the parentheses, so that's 2. And the initial value is in the front, which is 3.7. And this point is right here as well. Notice how special it is. Okay, so that's just a quick review. Let's go ahead and look at some tables that are already filled in for us. And try to go back and create that um, exponential function. Now that we have reviewed and discussed some of the vocabulary and the methods that we use to graph exponential functions. Let's discuss what you're going to be able to do after watching this video and creating your notes. You're going to be able to identify whether a given table represents an exponential growth or decay model. That's by looking at that growth factor. You'll be able to calculate the growth factor by dividing an output by the previous output. And that is, um, we'll be doing that from a table. You'll be able to calculate differences in consecutive outputs if the factor is not apparent. Once again, that's just looking at what's going on between the y values and the x values. We're going to extend the table using the growth or decay factor to find the initial value. So we're going to be working backwards to find out what value we'll begin at. And then we're going to use that initial value and factor to write out an exponential equation. So all these words sound a little scary, but they're not. Well, there's a step-by-step -step process, and we're going to go ahead and begin that with example number one. Okay, here is our example one. So we have a few questions to answer about just th this table. And we're going to use some of the information that we learned from previous, ex from previous lessons and examples to help us complete this problem. So the first thing we want to do is determine whether or not this is an, a function is exponential or not. 
And to do that, we're going to divide the previous values. So to do that, you'll take 27 and divide it by 81. And that will give you 1 third. So we took 27 and divided it by 81. Now we'll take 9 and divide that by 27. So 9 divided by 27 is going to be 1 third if you reduce it. So notice that it's having this fa the same factor. And then we're going to go from, how do we go from 1 to 3? 1 to 3 is just 1 third. So notice that it has the same exact factor, the exponential factor that we need to do our exponential equation. Notice we're not adding or subtracting values. Instead, we're needing to divide or multiply them by a number. So this is exponential. And does this represent growth or decay? Well, if your factor of B is one third, which it is for this example, then you're going to have decay because this v B value is going to be B is less than one. And of course, greater than zero. Your initial value, this is when X is zero. What is your Y value is 81. So that is your initial value. And that is when x equals 0. And now that we have our initial value, which is a, I'll put that in a different color. Initial value, that is a. So this is a, you guys. And then we have our b. We can now create our function. So this would be f of x equals a which is 81. Remember, we're following this model. f of x equals a, b to the x. And then b is going to be 1 third. You found that by dividing the x the y values, excuse me, and then you'll put x as your exponent. And we have our exponential function. Congratulations, you just created your first one. And you'll be practicing this in class as well. Okay, here is our example two. So we're going to have to see what happens when we divide the values to figure out if this is exponential or not. So really you want to see, are you adding the same number to go from here to here or vice versa? And for the other points, and the thing is that, is that you're not adding. Instead, you're going to need to divide. So we're going to take 29.04 and divide that by 13.2 and we would get... 2.2. And we can do the same thing here. We would take 63.888 and divide that by 29.04. Go ahead and check in your calculator. You should get 2.2. So 2.2 is our growth factor. So yes, this is exponential and this is our growth factor. Now what is our B? That is our growth factor is we figured out is 2.2. And then our A, which is our initial value, we need to find out when X equals 0. So to do that, we're going to have to go backwards. And we're going to need to divide this answer. We're going to divide by 2.2. And we will be able to get this answer up here, which would be 6. And this would go back as well to be 0. So we had to work backwards there. Notice that if I need to divide by 2.2 to get all these values, to get all of these values, if I need to divide by 2.2, then I should be able to divide this by 2.2 and be able to get 6. And then with this, uh, this is also my zeroth term. So this only took us one time. Only, we only needed to do this one time to go back once. But you may have to do this uh, several times to go back to your zero value. So we found out what our initial value is. We can write that in as 6. And now we can write our exponential equation. It's f of x equals 6, which is a. Our b is 2.2. And this will, of course, will be the x power for exponential. Here is our example 3. Notice that the first value they gave us was at 2. So I'm going to have to go backwards twice, Okay, do division twice to go up to these values up here. But let's go ahead and take a look at these questions and use this table to answer them. Get a different color. Okay, so is this function exponential? So we have to need to divide to do that. So we can do uh, 
49.15 divided by 78.64. Notice that I have to keep going backwards, right, to do this division part. And so if I divide those values, I would get 0 0.625. If I went backwards here to here, it would be 78.64 divided by 125.83, and that would give us 0 0.625. Now, you have to realize you must use a calculator to do this. So it would take a very long time to do this by hand. Then let's go to this value up here to up here. So we would need to then divide by the actual growth factor, which is 0 0.625. So I'll divide this answer, 125.83, divide that by 0 0.625, and I would get 201.328. one did all these calculations earlier. And now to go up again, one more, because if I go up one, I'm only going up, oops, let me, hold on a second. If I go up one, I'm only going up to the one power, and I need the zeroth one. So I have to go up one more. So then divide again by 0 0.625, and you would get as your zero term, 322.1248. This number just seems to keep decreasing, and as we we continue to decrease, we're dividing by 0 0.625 each and every time. That's how we figured out that rate. So now, this is exponential, so I'm dividing by this value. The initial value is uh, 322.1248, and now I'll write my exponential equ equation as f of x equals... 322.1248, and this is going to be, inside the parentheses is my rate, which is 0 0.6. Oh my goodness, I just made a mistake. Oh, I didn't make a mistake. I didn't answer a question. But let's finish this. 2, 5, and this is to the x power. And I forget to say, is this growth or decay? This b value right here is going to be less than uh, 1, but greater than 0. So this is decay. Okay, here's our last example. Like I would like you to try this one on your own, and then we'll discuss this one in class the following day. Now, review your notes, and if you're still confused, go ahead and rewatch the video. And now you should be able to answer this question. How do we create an exponential growth or decay function from a table? Notice that you have to divide the y values from the bottom one to the top in order to get your growth uh, factor. You're then going to have to sometimes go backwards to find your initial value. And then once you have those two numbers, it's very simple to plug it in and have your exponential equation. Okay, we'll continue the practices concept in class. Make sure you bring all your questions to class. And don't forget your summary. That should be three to four sentences in length.